Welcome back to National Report. There have been many forms of technology that have helped battle COVID-19 this year, but one in particular will be helping keep college campuses safe. Alabama State University has announced it will be partnering with drone company Dragonfly and will be utilizing drone technology on its campus to disinfect and protect against the virus. ASU has become the first college in the nation to use this technology. And joining us to discuss, along with our panel of the day, we welcome in Cameron Shell, the CEO of Dragonfly. So, Cameron, good to see you. Our panelist also standing by. Cameron, you say that your own drones are going to be used to help decrease the chance of Americans coming into contact with COVID-19. Tell us a little bit more about how this is all going to work. Sure, and thank you very much for having me on. Dragonfly uh, is a public company. Our symbol is DFLYF. That's DFLYF. And we're the oldest commercial drone manufacturer in the world. Uh, we've been building drones uh, specifically tailored around AI since the late 90s. And um, on top of delivering uh, sensors from cameras uh, that are either located on our drones or in kiosks that can monitor things like heart rate, respiratory rate, SpO2 simply from the camera, uh, the uh, Alabama State University is also following the protocol to have our drones spray the stadiums and auditoriums with a revolutionary sanitary product, uh, sanitization product that actually provides up to 24 hours of kill efficacy for um, everything that it touches. So um, our patented drones have a, uh, an incredible, unique and efficient way to be able to deliver this. And it's, it's literally a way and an answer to get the stadiums open again. Yeah, and you can do so quickly with that drone power. And Jesse, Jane, you know, we're seeing with Dragonfly here that there are these companies that are stepping up to find some solutions. What does this say to you about American ingenuity during these unprecedented times? It just demonstrates that Americans are moving forward with or without the government. We know that with this capability, we will all be able to get back into arenas. Nobody enjoyed sports more than I did. And then just to have to be removed from it or even watching sports with these artificial audiences behind the players just doesn't have the same attraction. We love the camaraderie and there's nothing like a college stadium that is bursting with energy. So I celebrate this. I think this is great to see that the drones are being used for the used for the good of all of our communities to ensure that we're able to get back to what we call the new normal. And I expect we're not going to have as much flu because he said it kills everything it touches. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, people are washing their hands more so than they ever have before. You'd hope they'd done it previously, but now they are really doing it. So you're hoping you're keeping uh, those flu cases down as well, which we've actually seen. But Cameron, back to you. Uh, also learning that you're partnering with Cold Chain Technology Services. It's a leading healthcare supply chain management company. They've introduced these rapid COVID tests uh, yeah. at the early onset of the pandemic. Tell us a little bit about that partnership and how also that will increase the students' abilities to get back at campus and feel safe. Well, one of the things that Dr. Ross, the president of ASU, has been absolutely phenomenal in his leadership of having a campus that has either no or next to no COVID, which is unheard of in this day. And the reason that he's done it is he's introduced uh, a safely opening schools system, uh, which uh, is comprehensive in terms of uh, it has Dragonfly screening and testing on its cameras as people come in. It has Veriguard uh, spray protection, sanitized protection, and it has uh, Cold Chain providing the Abbott Labs rabbit test testing um, uh, system, which is about a 15 minute test. They have isolation units, uh, mm -hmm. they have nursing staff. They, they've really thought through the, a pragmatic approach to protect their faculty, their staff and their students. And consequently, they're able to operate. Uh, they're, I think they're an absolute model for how things should be done going forward. Well, this is a campus from the future. We've got the rapid tests and we've got the drones circulating. And, and Jack, I know some people, they might be a little worried or freaked out by these drones flying around, maybe monitoring the college campus. But at this point, it's something that will allow students to get back in the classroom. And you know that they're missing their time with their friends and, and learning in person at this point. You know, as Jesse Jane said, this is what happens when the government gets out of the way, when it starts treating the private sector, the innovators of the world, as part of the solution. 
you can move the ball forward. Um, doesn't surprise me that Cameron Shell's on the leading edge. I'm a big fan. He is an innovator. He's the epitome of the American dream. And Cameron, I spent the um, uh, whole day Tuesday with the new senator from Alabama, Tommy Tuberville, who, as you know, has a background in sports, having coached the Auburn football team. Actually, he was a head coach at five schools. I think he's going to be extremely, extremely interested in this. I think when you get people like that on board yeah. and what doing at ASU, you're going to have a, a national movement. And so I'm just glad you're doing this. People need to get back to sports. They need to get back to relaxing. Yeah, they missed their normal life. And Cameron, you'll have to come back on the program. Give us any updates when you get them. You're Cameron Shell. Thank you so much. Joining us live. Thank you very much. Our panel, stay by. Uh, we've still got one more segment to get to. Coming up, more news. We are talking about a very sentimental moment, Tom. We showed you this earlier in the show. Senators coming together for an impromptu Christmas concert, a brief moment of bipartisanship on Capitol Hill. Could it, could it be a sign of better days to head ahead? We'll discuss.